So we'll be using two blocks, just put them to the side for now. Let's give ourselves some time on our backs, draw knees in and rock a little from side to side. Do those yawning open stretches, those pendiculation stretches where you just naturally stretch your body out, maybe the twist and stretch. You'll likely yawn when you stretch like this. And so you're letting yourself yawn open in all different directions. It's an energizing technique that all the mammals use. I'm sure even dolphins pendiculate just with their flippers and tails. <laughs> and once you've had a nice yawn open, we'll target uh, the front of the legs first. We'll do um, the hip flexors and lower belly. So draw knees in and then draw face up towards knees. So you're holding your knees and you're going to pull yourself up into a little ball and then let your hands reach past your feet. So you're just squeezing yourself in and reaching your fingertips past your feet for five, four, three, two, one. And then can you slowly open, lift your arms up over your head, legs come out, arms up over your head, but not touching the floor, feet down, but not touching the floor, and then lift your face again for five, four, three, two, one, squeeze in, squeeze in. You can hug your knees with your hands initially and then reach your hands past your feet for five, four, three, two, one, and then open slowly. You're going into like a really, really low boat. Heels are just floating off the floor, heads lifted off the floor. Uh, reach your hands up above you, but not touching the floor. Three, two, one. Okay, last one. Squeeze in, reach past your feet, five, four, three, two, one, and then open out, very, very, very low boat, almost touching the floor, not quite with the head, hands and feet, three, two, one, and then sink down onto the floor and uh, move your head from side to side because that's quite heavy on the neck muscles. So side to side with the head. And then let's bend the knees, feet on floor. We're going to Pulse the pelvis to switch on the thighs, the buttocks, and the lower back. Hands can come beside you. So lift up. You're in uh, the push down through your feet, lifts the bum up, and then let's pulse. So halfway down, push back up, halfway down, push back up. So you can do this with your eyes closed, just pulsing the pelvis, allowing a squeeze to come through the buttocks each time you lift your pelvis, a little squeeze. Let's do five. Four, three, two, one. Set, settle down. Just give yourself a little windshield wipe the legs. We're going to do it again, but we're going to move the feet slightly further away. So bring your feet further away. You can flex your feet so it's just your heels on the floor. So flexed feet, heels pushing down. Okay, lift up, lift up, lift up, and then pulse. Halfway down, push back up. Halfway down, push back up. So now we're using uh, the hamstrings as well. The pushing down with the heels, with the flexed feet, when our feet are a little bit further away from us, switches on the hamstrings as well as the thighs, as well as the glutes, as well as the lower back. Okay, let's do five, four, three, two, one. Okay, a little windshield wipe. We're going to do one more set. So you can try your feet slightly further away. If you're if it doesn't feel comfy, bring them slightly further in, but you've got a flex in your feet. So your toes are not touching the ground, only the back of your heels touching. Okay, lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up, and then pulsing. Keep your knees in line with your hips. You can close your eyes and simply feel the muscles start to awaken. Pulsing, pulsing, pulsing for Five, four, three, two, one. And then relax, relax, relax. Okay, big windshield wipe. And as we windshield wipe our legs from side to side, the feet are off the mat. They're wider than the mat. And then we're going to linger. It doesn't matter which side you linger in. You're just going to linger on one side and draw the back knee towards the floor. The push of the back, the inner part of the back foot 
can maybe draw that back knee towards the floor. So we're freeing up the space across the hip, front hip. So this is hip extension just to release the hip flexors. So change sides, drawing the back knee towards the floor, pushing into the inner blade of the back foot and then back up. All right, give yourself a little squizzle around, a little kick out with the legs and you can kick up or kick out, whatever feels good. Mostly to um, get the knees to whatever pops or cracks need to come through the knees, get them done, especially if you've just woken up. All right, now we're going to lift right foot. We're just gonna pulse the left thigh. So this is going to be quite heavy on the left leg. Right heel stays up to the ceiling. If it doesn't feel good in the lower back, we go back to two feet on the ground. Use your hands beside you to support you. Bend the left knee and bring the heels um, quite close to you. It can't be too far away. It's going to be too heavy. All right, ready? We're going to push through the left foot to lift the right foot up towards the sky. That's it. And then pulse. Go up and down. Pulse. 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 Four. Five. We're doing ten. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Stay up. Push through your arms as well for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Come all the way down. We're going to do the active number four pose, but we're going to do it for the left leg. So bring your right foot down, left ankle touches right knee. So we've switched legs. The left leg is on top. We're going to push away with that left leg, the left ankle and knee push away, switch on external hip rotators, and then the right foot lifts off the floor. Active number four pose, three breaths with a soft face. Inhale one, exhale, two, charge it up, exhale, three, and then land heavily, bang, rocking from side to side. All right, let's switch around. So we're going to keep the right foot down, left foot to sky. You can flex the left foot. So make sure the bend of the knee is quite tight. The right foot is quite close to you and the knee and hip are gonna stay in line. You're gonna use your arms to support, to push up, 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 and pulse halfway down, push back up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stay up, stay up for ten, nine. Push through the arms, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, come down, left foot down, right ankle on right, on left knee, and then you're pushing away with the right leg. The ankle and the knee pushing away from you, and then lift the left foot off the floor, charge it up, charge it up, and breathe. Three breaths. One. Exhale. Two. Exhale. Three. Exhale here. All right, land heavily, bang, and rock, and rock, and rock. All right, let's bring both feet down onto the floor and just tap the sacrum. So thump, 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 thump. thump. Let's walk the pelvis next, and then we'll switch to hands and knees. So lift the bum up a few inches from the floor. Keep the knees in line with the hips. They're not swaying from side to side. They're going to go forwards and backwards. Ready? Touch one buttock and then lift, touch the other buttock and lift. So close your eyes, soften your face, unclench the jaw and let the pelvis walk as smoothly and as slowly as you can. Move your pelvis to touch one buttock onto the floor at a time. Trying to keep it fairly symmetrical. There'll be uh, an asymmetry in the pelvis probably. By the time we are over 40, we definitely have generally speaking, a bit of a twist in our pelvis. And so you'll notice, you'll pick up the asymmetry. It might be much easier on one side to touch the buttock. The pelvis is 
twisting from the lower back spine all the way through the pelvis and your hips are internally rotating to take the step. So notice the internal rotation to allow that buttock to touch. And we're powering up this internal rotation. All right, let's take 10 more steps. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and surrender your pelvis onto the floor, soften your buttocks as much as you can. And then we'll draw the knees into the chest. We'll let ourselves rock from side to side and massage up through the sacrum. And then we'll hand, we'll bring the, our hands to the back of the knees, flex the feet and just open and close the legs, just kicking, alternating leg to the ceiling. Kick, 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 kick. Bring both heels to the sky and then just the ankles kicking. <laughs> so paddling your feet, alternating like a duck swimming across a lake. So paddle, 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 paddle. Rotate, 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 rotate in one direction. And then in the other direction. All right, I would call that legs warmed up. <laughs> Hold the knees, spring up to a seated position, ready for hands and knees. Let's do the arch and curl from hands and knees. We're going to pull back when we arch. So back bend, pull back. Forward bend, pull forwards. So you're going to inhale, pull back. Exhale, pull forwards. Inhale, back bend, pulling back like pulling the tail back and then round forwards. Arch back round forwards do two or three more rounds last one coming into child's pose let's go wide knee child's pose let the rib cage drop towards the floor reach your hands out front palm space open so you've got some shoulder opening stretch here the little fingers are touching each other, forehead on the floor, a couple of breaths. Last breath here. And let's push into the elbows, bring the knees together. Let's just uh, give ourselves a bit of stretch around toes and wrists. Bring knees together, tuck toes, push backwards onto your feet. So your toes are stretching, especially the big toes. So bring your heels towards each other and you'll really isolate the big toes. Now bring the fingertips towards your knees and then just let your hands, palms face down, stretch open. And so if you feel like, oh, I could go a little bit further, walk your fingers or your wrists, walk your hands forwards a little bit, but your bum's still on, uh, the heels, but just stretching the wrists, tucked toes, palms face down, the wrists are facing forwards. Get into something that's, uh, that's sustainable and then push into your fingertips for five, four, three, two, one. And then re let's, let's release from that tap the toes onto the mat, just tap gently your toes, especially your big toe, tap, 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 tap. Grab your blocks and we'll play this really, really fun game called knee kissing game. The knee kissing game starts in down dog. I'm sure you can imagine how fun a knee kissing game is gonna be. Okay, right foot lifts, right knee kisses the right block. So kiss the right block. Mwah. Right foot lifts, now kiss the left block with the right knee. Right knee kisses right elbow, right elbow kiss. And then right knee kisses left elbow, might be an air kiss. Right knee kisses right armpit. <laughs> kisses left armpit, it's probably an air kiss. <laughs> okay, right foot lifts for a moment, just keep it up. You can squizzle around with the back foot. While we're here, lift off the left heel, just bouncing the left ankle, squizzling right foot, bouncing left ankle. So there's a little bit of bounce in this one. Okay, right foot steps in between the blocks. 
<laughs> back foot a little bit closer for the high lunge, bend the front knee. We're in high lunge here. Let's do the lunge dips with a twist. <laughs> Lift and lengthen both knees and arms. Bend both knees, twist to the right. Exactly, yes. Inhale, lift up, twist to the right. So we're just always going to the same direction. That's it. Inhale, lift up, exhale, twist. Lift up, twist. We'll do two more. Lift up, twist. We're going to stay two breaths on the next one. Up, twist. Don't go so low if you feel uncomfortable. Two breaths, one, exhale. Two, exhale here, lift up, inhale, right, uh, hands down, foot back, flush that out of the leg. Let's take a little bit easy on ourselves. Let's go to child's pose, knees down. We're going to leave our hands out front, bums back, hands out front, but you're going to lift the palms off the blocks and just the wrists are pushing down to the blocks. So you're just pushing your wrists into the blocks so the hands are flexed at the wrist and really nice and active. Spread your fingers for five, four, three, two, one. And then your hands can soften. They can even just pull back. You can pull your elbows back towards your knees and let your arms rest. Take a breather, take a moment. We're gonna do the kissing game on the left knee. Okay, let's come up, <laughs> down dog. So lifting the left foot up to the sky, left knee kisses, left block. And up, left knee kisses, right block. <laughs> left knee kisses, left elbow. And right elbow, maybe. Left armpit. And an air kiss to the right armpit. And then we lift up, left foot in between the blocks. Back foot a little bit closer, up into the high lunge. Okay, inhale, lengthen the legs. Exhale, twist, bend both knees. You're twisting to the left. Inhale, up, exhale, down in the twist. Smooth out your movement. Of course, there's a balance challenge here. Adapt and acclimatize to the balance challenge. Two more. We're inhaling, lifting up, exhaling, twisting. One more, we're going to stay two breaths. Twist, bend both knees, breathe. One, exhale. Two, exhale here. Inhale, lift up, hands down, foot back. Let's go knees down, child's pose. Widen your knees and then we're doing child's pose twist. So you might like a block to come with you in the twist because it might be that your neck, your head wants to rest on a block. So just have a block um, within arm's reach. Left hand on the mat, right arm comes up and out initially and then all the way through to the twist. If you want the block underneath your face, just tuck it underneath your face. Push into the left hand on the floor. You might like to bring the left arm all the way around, up and over to the opposite thigh if you want. Wherever you are, go back to the breathing. Three more breaths. One. Two. Three. And then we'll unhook the back arm if you've got it hooked. Come up and out. Give yourself a little wiggle in the middle, maybe a little rock from side to side. So the right hand stays, left arm reaches to the sky and then under for the twist. Set your block underneath your face if you need it. And maybe pushing into the right arm, maybe that arm comes all the way around for a shoulder opener. And then we breathe. One. Two, three, and then slowly release. Let's play another game with our down dog and blocks called the elevator game. You might remember this game. We've played it before. All right, so lift your right foot to so your down dog. Lift your right foot up towards the sky, right foot 
to right block, I'm sorry, right knee, right knee to right block. That's the basement. Okay, slide up the S elevator to the penthouse all the way to the armpit and then down to the basement. That's one, we're doing three. Up to the armpit, down to the basement, two. Up to the armpit, down to the basement, three. Up to the armpit for five, four, three, two, one. Lift the right foot up towards the sky. Warrior two, right foot in between the block, back foot square. Warrior two, let's move and breathe. Inhale, reach up, lengthen right leg. Exhale, down, warrior two. Inhale, hands come forwards. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, hands come back. Warrior two, three breaths. So gazing at your front, front fingernails for three breaths, one. Exhale. Two. Exhale. Three. All right, take the hands down and the foot comes back. We're in the down dog, flush that out of the legs. And let's do the elevator game on the left. Lift the left foot up, up, up. Let's go to the basement first. Left knee to the basement of the left block. Lift up to the penthouse and down to the basement. One, up, down, two, up, down, three, up. Stay up for five, four, Three, two, one. Lift the left foot up to the sky. Left foot in between the blocks, warrior two. Ah. <laughs> Moving and breathing. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Reaching forward, warrior two. Reaching backwards, warrior two for, for three breaths. Inhale, one. Two, three, nice charge in hips and shoulders now. Hands down, foot comes back. All right, then one knee at a time. We'll just let ourselves walk our down dog for a moment. Just come forwards, floppy forward bend. So walk forwards, walk forwards. Just let yourself flop the head, maybe the elbows get held by the hands. Rocking a little from side to side. We're gonna do a cross-legged forward fold now. So we've got our blocks nice and close. Bring the blocks to the tall edge, right at the top of the mat. So your straight arm, straight leg. Step the right foot behind the left foot, crossed over, nice and tight cross. And then walk the blocks across to the side and then rock a little bit from side to side. So you wanna just lean into one hip and then lean into the other hip, especially the, the back leg hip. You can really pull yourself so that you've got a real adduction in the hip. It's a real cross and you're leaning into that ad adduction. So whatever feels good in this position, just rocking a little bit from side to side. Let's stay in the forward fold now. So you can have a little bend in the knees and see if you can bring your elbows onto the blocks. It might be a big fat never, never. I'm never going to bring my elbows onto the blocks and that'd be fine as well. Release your head and neck wherever you are. All right, let's come back up and out. Walk across into the center, left foot behind right foot. Nice and tight in the cross. Walk your blocks with you and then rocking from front leg to back leg. And so when you're leaning your whole bum towards the right, the tilt of the pelvis is causing a real adduction in the left hip. That's what we're kind of looking for is that deep adduction. We're kind of sinking the right hip down, kind of uh, hiking the left hip up. Hopefully that's making sense to you. It's a lot when we're in crossed legs, there's a lot of confusion in the right and the left. All right, so both legs nice and um, taking the weight equally. Bend the knees a little bit if you need to and then bring your elbows down onto the blocks if you can or if you're willing or if you want to. And if not, hands are fine. You can come back up. It might be so deep and this will be a really unusual depth because it's the lateral lines of the legs. There'll be, of course, the hamstrings backside of the legs as well. At least head and neck wherever you are. And then let's come up and out, walk back into the center, 
We're in a forward fold. You can bring your blocks flat to the sides. Just bring your hands onto your knees for a moment. Let's just do some tailbone circles to massage the sacrum to lower back spine from the ball and socket joint from the pelvis into the hips. We're trying to minimize the movement of the knees and maximize the movement, change direction, maximize the movement of the pelvis, drawing a tailbone circle that's nice and circular, not an oval <laughs> and not with a big flat spot. All right, slowly arch and curl, just lower back to arching and curling. So it's tucking the tail and then sticking it back. And this is a lovely massage between the ball of the hip and the socket of the pelvis and then the sacrum to the lower back. All right, let's lean onto our heels to stand all the way up and we'll do some standing balance poses next. So let's take our left hand onto our hip, take the right foot into the left thigh. We're in tree pose. So whatever you need to do to get that to catch, you might need to hold onto a chair or something like that. So once your legs are set, reach your arms out and up, your eye line, your eyes are at um, eye height, and then the hands reach each other and then bring the hands down into the center, soft face. And you start to close your eyes. You might even get to eyes to close. The eyes might close. It might be that you need your eyes to stay up in the balance. Snap your eyes open before you fall. So we're just training our legs, to be able to take that sense of balance, even without the horizon line that the eyes provide to us. We want a few more seconds of maybe trying to close your eyes and stay up. Snap your eyes open before you fall. <laughs> yes, you can use your arms like a you're a tightrope walker. <laughs> Keep your sense of humor because it's quite funny that it's so hard to do with your our eyes closed. All right, let's come up and out of that. All right, you can take your right knee into your chest. Just give it a little squeeze and then switch. So give it a little, little kick out and then we'll switch sides. So the left knee out left foot into the right thigh, pushing the thigh back to the foot as the, just as long as we're not kind of kinking the pelvis too much. Yeah, okay. Eyes at eye height, arms float up and out. They meet, they come into the center. Feel that lovely connection between the foot and the thigh and the hands to each other. And then start to see if you can uh, close your eyes, even just a little bit, just dim the light by kind of squinting your eyes closed, get rid of some of the horizon line, some of the information disappears and maybe all the way to closed. It might be way harder or way easier on this side. It could be impossible on both sides and it's just a fun game to play. We let the horizon line disappear and then see if we can still stay steady. Open your eyes before you fall. <laughs> Two more seconds, 10 more seconds. Just keep trying, it gets easier and easier. The toes start to get really involved as well. All right, and then release. Let's bring the left knee into the chest, give it a squeeze and then release and kick that out. Oh, okay, need a little twist and shout before we go to the next one, a little twisty dance. <laughs> so Garudasan, we haven't done this uh, much. If you don't like, if your hips are already a bit feeling a bit shaky, grab a block. We're going to cross the left over the right and the block is just there. You can actually just lean onto it. So it might be that the block is helpful. So you might just have it, have it far enough away that if you come into the position, is it your toes onto the floor or onto the block? So you've got it as an option. You might do full Garudasan. So this is left crossing over right. So bend your right knee. Cross your left leg over. You can do the double, the double spin. You can catch the foot in between, in behind if you want to. All right, so we've got the left leg on top. So we need the left arm to start. Left arm comes forward. Scoop under, under, under. Hands together. Bend nice and low. Look past your fingers. Lock your eye, eye to the horizon and breathe. Inhale one. Exhale. Two. 
Exhale. Three, last breath. Exhale here. Okay, blast your arms out. Lift your knee up, catch your knee, and then release and kick that out. Bring the block just in case, the other side. So a little kick out of the legs before we go. keep going. This is a tricky one. <clears throat> All right, so that block is there in case you wanna use it. Right leg over left, cross, maybe the double cross. Your toes might poke around as well. <laughs> okay, so the right leg's on top. So we start with the right elbow in front of our face. And then we skip under and around, Garudasana, bend, lean in, breathe. Ga gazing past your hands, inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, exhale. Inhale three, exhale here. Unwrap your arms. Unwrap your leg, lift the knee into the chest, squeeze, and then kick out, kick out, kick out. Oh, you might even need to take a moment just to wag your tail or circle your knee. Just get your hips to forgive you. <clears throat> so we'll do one last exercise. You don't need any blocks. Uh, so I'll do it front on, on, but you don't have to do it facing, you can face the top of the mat if you want to. So step your right foot behind your left and you're on the ball of the, of the right foot, but you've got a cross. All right, so we're gonna curtsy here. So bring your arms out and then bring yourself low. It might be that you even touch the knee onto the floor, very, very deep bow, curtsy. And then bring your right knee up, catch that with your right hand. That's the end of that one. We've got three more, ready? Step behind, very deep curtsy. The knee might come all the way or maybe close to the floor. And then we lift it out to the side, catch the knee. One more, <laughs> very deep curtsy. Back knee towards the floor. And then we catch the knee and we're done on that side. So you can give yourself a little kick out. We'll do the other side, ah, a little twisty. A little shake in the knees, like that, <laughs> that dance that we used to do when we were kids. Okay, so left is going behind the right. So left foot behind onto the ball. So you've got crossed legs, very deep curtsy, and the back knee comes towards the floor. And then we lift the left knee out to the side. That's one, two more. Ball of the foot, very deep bow, both knees bending. And then so smoothly, catch the left knee. One more. <laughs> Find this quite dramatic and theatrical. So bend both knees, deep bow, and then catch. And then kick that out, well done. All right, give yourself a little twist and shake. Bring the blocks flat to the mat again. Let's do a couple of sun salutations just to kind of um, absorb all of that movement, I really want to get to some pigeon poses. So come to Samastitihi and inhale, arms come up. Exhale, fold down. You can bring your hands on the blocks. Inhale, half lift. Let's step straight back to plank. Step, step, plank. We're not going to do chaturanga or up dog. We're going to go from plank, inhale, exhale, down dog. All right. We're going to play with the one-legged pigeon. We're not going to land it. One-legged pigeon is an external hip rotation. We're doing right side first. We're gonna do it actively. So lift the right foot up, up, up. The right knee towards the right block, the right foot towards the left block and pause for five, four, three, two, one. Lift the right foot up. Let's do that once more. So just give yourself a little break. You can kick your own bum. <laughs> can you kick your own bum like this? Maybe, that's kind of cool if you can. Okay, right knee towards right block, right foot towards left block. Pause for five, four, three, two, one. Have a break. Kick your own butt. <laughs> or open and close, and you might not be able to kick your own butt. All right, right knee touches the floor behind the right block. Right foot comes towards the left block, doesn't have to come very far forward. Walk back and down on the back 
leg, but push into the front leg. So the right buttock might lift off the floor, push into the front leg. See if you can come to your fingertips and if it's possible, bring your hands back and lean forwards. You're pushing down through the front leg for five, four, three, two, one, hands down, bum down, soften into it, and then bring your elbows onto the blocks. Give yourself a little facial massage. Hopefully this type of really precise action in our hips allows our hips to be awake, nice and strong, very well calibrated, that as you walk around for the rest of the day that you're powerfully walking, you're kind of um, strong in your stance. Your pelvis is free and strong and coordinated, maybe a little bit more balanced. That's why we work in such kind of refined and defined ways into the hips like this. So we're in one-legged pigeon in the passive stretch now. And we're going to sweep the back leg around the front. So move the blocks out of the way so you don't kick them. The back leg sweeps around for the hook and twist. You can lengthen the underside leg if you need to. So hook and then really hug the right arm around the left knee and hug right in so the, the knee, left knee comes towards the right breast, the right side of the rib cage. And then bring the fingers around. This is not focused on the twist. It's focused on the external hip rotation and the lateral space that we're creating in that left hip right now. Last breath here. All right, unhook. We're going to see if we can stand up from here. So unhook this mobility trick that we've often used. Bring the right knee slightly out, slightly further out. Tuck that right foot right under. You need real action in that underside leg. So we're going to tuck it under as much as we can. Move the left foot a little bit further away from you maybe out to the left side and away from you. Bring your hands up into little fists and we're gonna see if we can lift our, off our bum three times, lift up and then back down slowly with so much control, no thump and lift up smoothly and go back down slow. That's two, we've got one more. Up. Let's pause halfway down. You go back halfway down, pause for five, four, three, two, one, and then lower all the way down, left foot all the way around, come back up to down dog, flush that out of the leg. So bring your blocks with you. So we're going to finish this sun salutation and then switch. So flush that out of the legs, your hands are on bricks. All right. Down dog for three breaths. Spread your hands, lengthen your legs, lift your tail to the sky one. Exhale. Two. Three. Jump forwards, inhale, half lift. Exhale, hold down. Inhale, up. And Samasit Jihi, let's do the other side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, half lift. Step, step, plank. Take an extra breath here. Inhale, plank. And then exhale, down dog. All right, we're going to do the active um, pigeon pose. We're not kind of landing for a little bit. So left foot lift, 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 then left knee to left block, left foot to right block and pause. Nothing's touching the floor for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep up, kick your own butt with the heel. So open and close, and close the left knee. Let's go again. Active in the left knee to left block, left foot to right block for five, four, three, two, one. Lift up, kicking. All right, we're gonna land at this time, but we're gonna activate it as well. So left knee behind the left block onto the floor, left foot towards the right block, but not getting too fussy about that. Walk back and down on the left thigh, and then push into the front 
thigh, push into the front knee and foot. So the left buttock rises from the floor. You might be on your fingertips. You might bring your hands back. You might lean down a little bit. Arrow head. That's it. Inhale two. Inhale three. Hands down, bum rests and sink in. Give yourself a little massage. You might massage your face or your scalp. You might comb your fingernails through your hair, scratch into the scalp, communicating through to the cranial nerves. And we'll be very deliberate about accessing the vagus. That I think it's the 12th cranial nerve. So pull out your ears now, pull out, and then pull down and pull up. And then pull into little circles, pulling the ear into little circles. And then bring your fingers, the pads of your fingers. If you've got long fingernails, this is not going to feel so comfy, but push your the pads of your fingers into the ears, not the whole of the ears to block off the sound, but the next little crease, the next little crease up, and then to do little circles. So your whole ear is moving in little circles. And then in the other direction, circles, little circling ears. Okay, anything else that you want to do to your ears, you might want to just pull at the skin around the cartilagey bit right up into that, that upper curve of your ear, your beautiful ears. You clever thing to have grown such interesting ears out the side of your head. <laughs> and then the back foot comes around. So push the blocks away so you've got nothing to kick. Back foot comes around, hook and twist. So you hook the foot and then... Instead of focusing on the twist, focus on the hip opening effect of the left knee, the right knee coming towards the left breast and chest and breathe. And then we're playing around with trying to lift off the floor. So unhook. Tuck the underside foot nice and tight. The left knee comes out slightly because you need to be able to access the push of the underside leg. Bring the right foot out slightly further. Bring your hands up and see if you can go up and down three times. Lift up and then slowly back down without a thump. <laughs> and then up, using your arms if you need them. And then slowly back down to... Last one, we're lifting up. We're gonna stop halfway down. So back up, go halfway down and pause for five, four, three, two, one. And then ease back down, right foot behind you. And then back into down dog, bring your blocks with you so we can finish the sun salutation. Hands on bricks, three breaths down dog. Inhale one. Inhale two. Three. We're not going to jump forwards. We're going to jump through now. So if you want to just jump on through, otherwise you bring your knees down, blocks back to knee line. So knees next to blocks. And then you keep pushing into your hands to cross your ankles, then lift your knees and then walk your feet through the center. That's it. That's it. That's it. And then once you're at seated, just bring yourself into a little ball. Just give yourself a little hug. We're going to open and close our boats. Ready? Nice sailing boat, bent knees. Lift your arms, lift your chest. Two breaths here, one. Two. Two breaths on a nice open boat. So go a little bit open. So just the sacrum on the ground. Inhale, one. Inhale, two, pop back up, sailing boat, one, two, open the boat, go as far down as you're willing, one, two, okay, hold the knees as you lift up, hold the knees, give yourself a big hug, you did very well, we're going to need to stretch that out, so we'll use, um, a bit of a twist to do that. So you don't need to blocks anymore. Come into a 
um, both knees going to the left, tuck both feet in. So both knees are to the left and both feet are to the right and then spin around to the left and then walk your hands a little bit further around, further around. You might bring your right elbow to the floor if you feel like that's legitimately comfortable and possible and breathe. So that right hip, the back thigh, the back um, back leg hip, in this case it's the right hip, you're pulling the psoas right away from the hip and breathing using the breath like a massage tool. And then we'll ease around it takes a little while to just get over that let's just sit up for a moment and there's another little hip um, riddle that we can play here can we just sit up hopefully yes oh very nice and then back down fourth halfway down and then sit back, <laughs> switch sides. So you don't need your hands to switch around to the other side. So both knees to the right, tuck the feet in. <clears throat> so we're spinning around for the twist. So walk your hands and your chest around to the right side. You're now working the left psoas and left hip flexors. So maybe the left elbow comes down. That might be too tight for you. It might be that you don't have the space. You're just using the arms nice and long. To twist around. Use your breath. The breath is a, an amazing massage tool in this position. Sometimes when we feel tight in postures like this, it's not the muscles, it's the intestines might be a little inflamed. And of course, we don't want to uh, tug and pull at ourselves too much, but we do want to be on a path of discovery. We do want to support and stimulate our bodies. And then ease around to the front. Just sit for a moment. The, the, that twist can disappear from the belly muscle. And let's just see what happens if we try and get up. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yes. And then go halfway down. Pause like you just forgot something <laughs> and then sit all the way down. Let's come all the way into a seated position. And I would say sitting on a block would be nice. Hopefully the hips are feeling super groovy and totally happy sitting in cross-legged position. Of course, most of the uh, Hatha Yoga postures are designed for this to sit so that we can be in stillness. All right. So let's, Take a moment with closed eyes. And we'll do a little bit of mudra work. We'll do a little bit of mantra. So mantra and mudra. And so this mudra is something I think I made up. I, I can't remember. I've been playing around with this for a long time. So I like to bring my right hand thumb and first finger together. So we've got like a little looking glass. It could be a rabbit if we had if we were doing some silhouette shapes. Okay, that looking glass comes onto your chest so that you're looking, you're pretending that you're looking straight through your heart. And so this mudra of the heart seeing the world, the heart seeing the world, and what clarity the heart sees. So it's no longer that we are seeing with our minds, we're seeing now with our hearts. And our hearts are of course, full of love. So we'll see the world with love, full of kindness and compassion, full of forgiveness and connection. And so we're seeing each other and seeing our people, our colleagues, our families, our brothers and sisters, if you have them, our children, if you have any, our nieces and our nephews and our mums and our dads, if they're still here with us. We're seeing the ones, the people that we love, 
with such kindness and forgiveness and acceptance. And let's see those who we feel like might have disrespected us or perhaps judged us too harshly. Anybody you have a grudge with, see them through your heart with kindness and love and forgiveness and acceptance. And of course, we can't avoid when we see with our heart, when we see the world the way the heart sees the world. Yes, we'll see the suffering. We definitely will. And that will, will probably cause a little bit of an ache in our heart. But let's soften that ache and allow ourselves to see. Let's allow our hearts to see. We've got a brave, fiercely loving heart. And we can see and accept the reality, the reality of our people, the, the immensity of our own love. We can see anybody that we're grumpy with, we can see them with such deep forgiveness and understanding. And we can see those that are hurting and we can feel fearless love for, for them. We're not shying away, we're not looking away. And your heart might feel like it's thumping harder, you might feel full, you might feel tender. Feel your feelings. Bravely and fiercely feeling. Brave enough to see as the heart sees. And then just let your hand rest onto your lap. You can take both the left thumb and first finger and the right thumb and first finger. So you've just got chin mudra, letting yourself rest here, connected. connected to the wholeness, connected to us, all of us, everyone. We're not isolated from one another. We're all alive together, a motley bunch, all alive, trying our best, trying to keep ourselves safe, trying to thrive, trying to feel proud of ourselves, trying to manage and cope with the complexity of our own mind and trying to love deeply and live gently and really trying to let go of those things that are not meant for us. Really, really, we're trying to let go gracefully. We are. We're all trying. We can feel and sense that everybody's trying. And trying to be happy and safe healthy, trying to find joy and justice. If any of that has made you catch in your throat, just soften your throat, swallow a few times. We'll close off with the mantra. Let's close off with the green Tara mantra that we are reminded that we are these incredibly radiant beings. We are not the temporary and passing emotions that we experience. We are the radiant, vibrant being. Okay, hands together. <clears throat> um, tare, tu tare, tu he, so ha. Om tare, tu tare, tu re, so ha. Om tare, tu tare, tu re, so ha. Om tare, tu tare, tu re, so ha. 
Om Tare, Tu Tare, Tu Re. So ha, Om Tare, Tu Tare, Tu Re. So ha. Face, eyes soften. Your throat and mouth soften, collarbones and shoulders soft. They're soft and relaxed, yet powerful and strong. We're fierce and intelligent and perceptive, but also kind and receptive, aware and awake. Courageously ourselves with a heart full of love. Hmm, that's delicious. Courageously ourselves with a heart full of love. So you might go into meditation or relaxation, but whatever you do, courageously yourself with your heart full of love. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.